So I'm going to introduce first uh, Doug Hairston. Uh, Doug Hairston is with the City of Indianapolis, Office of the Mayor, Director of the Front Porch Alliance, working with faith and community organizations. And uh, so I'm going to let him give a government perspective. I can tell you, uh, come on up, Doug. I can tell you with my experience, um, you know, the first responders are all are, are 90 percent um, government employees and maybe 10 percent self-deploying individuals that kind of get in the way, as Kevin talked about a little bit earlier. But there's a transition period from the first response that needs to take place because the government is not set up to take care of the needs long term and even a lot of the other things. So it's important that as that transition happens from the government, first responders, that passing the torch and the information and communication off to the volunteer basis that needs to happen and transition smoothly. So. Uh, the governor's office is um, very, it's the number one agenda for the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives to make sure that the communication network is in place uh, before, Mayor, uh, before <laughs> Governor Daniels leaves office. Um, we don't know whether Ike's going to stay around or not, but, but that is his number one goal. So they're committed to making this happen. So we're working alongside the government, business leaders, and uh, also the local churches working together to make sure that um, it takes place. So without further ado, Doug Hairston. Pleasure to be with you. I appreciate uh, Jesus waking me up this morning. Amen. Even on a cold day. Amen. <laughs> but I wanted to just kind of share with you from the office of the mayor. When Mayor Ballard ran, one of the things that he said, he, when a disaster happens, when something major happens, he wants to have a streamlined focus of allowing the work to go on and make sure things get done quickly. Uh, two months, well, actually five months after he was there, two months after I was there, we had the tornado on the east side, the floods on the south side, and the chaos ensued. Because all, everything that he wanted to have in place was not in place. The, the communications, the uh, homeland security, and the mechanisms that government can bring to the table were not there. Of course, police and fire responded, uh, Red Cross responded, uh, and we were able to, to work with some of the churches in the immediate area to get housing and, and those types. But there's a sequence of, of events that happened, and that fell apart uh, after about 72 hours. And it was because we weren't able to really harness the power of the churches effectively. There wasn't a readiness that was happening. And so uh, on the uh, second slide, immediately following the, uh, the disaster, this group of folks started meeting. And what we found is some secrets, maybe some unknowns. An example is Red Cross is responsible for responding within 24 hours, and they will respond up to uh, two weeks, basically. And within that two week period, a lot of times they have an expenditure that they put out quickly, and then it's kind of like a little loud. Too loud? No. You're good. Probably getting a little feedback. And then what happens is uh, they have to do a fundraiser in order to recoup the money that they expend. And then within the two week period, after that two weeks, they began to usher folks out of their services and the hope is that the community would then be able to respond. In the majority of the cases during the, the disaster, we were able to respond. But especially on the east side, what we found is that there was probably 20% of the people were living with somebody and they did not have an address. That's where they were staying. They were couch homes, is what we call them. But they're floating from one place to another. Mothers with children, the single uh, fathers, and, and those type of people, they were left out in the cold somewhere. And it was our churches that responded and were able to begin to meet those needs. We also found that after we began to uh, meet as a group, that some of the pieces that we hoped were in place for Marion County were nowhere near. And so we began to uh, put together, go to the next slide. Can go to the next slide. The Marion County Community Organizations Active in Disasters, or IMC COE. I don't know if there's a nice way to say it. <laughs> But that is the core group that we've begun to establish. We have MOUs with all the groups that were mentioned before. 
And as you have a disaster that happens, you're going to be looking for some place to have an entry point. And our hope is that, uh, and well, actually I'm kind of excited, is that the churches will be those that volunteer base that can really insert itself, whether it's in Marion County or across the state, in, uh, in a certain point, if you can flip to the next screen, where we have uh, disaster case management, we have on-site volunteers, donated goods, and monetary donations. And in the, each of those areas, as you look, you'll see that, especially with the disaster case management, most churches are not set up to do that. And so what we've done is we've established a process to work with, especially our community centers, who will bring in case management and also some of the other uh, counseling centers in uh, Indianapolis. We have MOUs to bring in case management to work with the families to begin to, to reach out to their needs. The on-site volunteers, uh, I think one of the strategies that, you, that uh, you're working with is having a band that can respond. And these, there's uh, in 24 hours, uh, Homeland Security and fire and police, their responsibility is to secure that area and make sure that it's safe for the immediate responder, of course, but then for uh, other volunteers and other workers that have to come in to assess what has happened and those types of things. So that's why you see a lot of times there's a move to get the people out of the area so that they will be in a safe uh, location that they can begin to get case management and get their immediate needs met. But then the, the area that was affected immediately, we want to make sure it's safe before volunteers go in. Uh, in Boad was tremendous when they were able to provide, uh, what, I guess they called them uh, Baptist with chainsaws, and, and it was an opportunity for a group who was trained with using chainsaws and clearing debris. They came in and they were very effective, but it had to be a safe area the first before they could get in there. Electricity, uh, water, and those type of things had to be uh, secured. Um, with uh, the donation of goods, uh, we already have uh, secured warehouse space in a couple different areas here in the city, so in case one area is affected, we have another one that's available. And I believe that there are some other warehouses that are available in the, the body of Christ as well. We have garages where buses are and those type of things. That is fantastic to be able to coordinate that so you know where they are and so that you can communicate those things uh, back out. And even the state provided uh, warehouse space out in uh, their area as well. But that's just an example of when somebody says, I want to give a couch, and what do you do with it? And it's not so much how do you get it to the warehouse, how do you get it to the family path? So trucking companies and uh, pickup trucks and whatever needs to be harnessed as uh, resources, we need to make sure that they're there. And then monetary donations. One of the reasons why we work with United Way is because they have uh, a network of funding uh, processes already that not only meet the needs of the folks that they're working with within their, their system, but they have the mechanisms in place to fund folks outside of their system as well. And they can bring in donations nationally. Uh, when our disasters happened, uh, there was about $15,000 that came in immediately. And the question was, where do we put it? And uh, United Way of Central Indiana, of course, they have a relationship also across Central Indiana that allows us to work with other counties and help them meet their needs as we cross borders and those kind of things. And if you go to the last slide, the last slide didn't make it in the presentation, but it, it just showed the, the cycle. And we have what we call a volunteer reception center that we're setting up with United Way. It incorporates a call center along with training, uh, location or a, a communication location for folks to, to come together and understand what the, the tasks are going to be needed. And it'll also have follow -up. So a lot of stuff that you hear that can be set up within 24 to 72 hours has to have this thing called long term to it. And that long term recovery period uh, uh, at a year is what it takes most families to get back to the swing. <coughs> And a lot of times you see the excitement within two to three weeks, maybe a month, news coverage stops after that month, and it drops off the radar screen. So even as you begin to plan, as the body of Christ begins to plan, and the, the folks of faith come together, you have to have an eternal view of things. Long term, not short term. Because a lot of our neighbors that were in some of those flood situations in the south side of town, they're still going through some stuff. Amen? 
And so how do we meet the needs? How do we continue to meet the needs and work with them through their processes?